Okay, great. So I'm going to get started with this and I'm going to share my slides now. So, cool. Okay, it's just like taking a second to load. Okay. Um, um, Kaylee, I call myself Holmes iPad 2. I'm Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Uh, I don't know how to change. Don't know how to change it so instantly. Hi, Ruth. Also, thanks for thanks for letting me know. It's nice to. Hi, Sarah. It's good to see you. And also, yeah, I was thinking an interesting name, Holmes iPad 2. But it's nice to. Meet you. I don't know where it came from. <laughs> cool. Okay, so getting started with the session now. Um, I might actually turn my video off because I'm having a few connectivity issues. Um, but I will be, so there's a photo, nice photo of Louise, which I'm sure is confusing. <laughs> um, so for now, yeah, let's get started with the session. So. It doesn't look like Kaylee to me, it looks like <laughs> Louise. <laughs> Very much looks like Louise. In fact, it is Louise, but I haven't had time to change the, the photo, but I might I might edit it afterwards, but we'll see. I really like that photo of Louise though, so I'm gonna, I'm quite happy to keep it. So welcome to Image Editing for Beginners. And this is gonna be all about how to create your own personalized graphics, because it's, well, everything that can help you to create great, great visuals for your food enterprise, which you can then use online in your social media or in your emails to help improve your visibility. And um, as I've mentioned, first we're going to cover some basic design principles to help you make really eye-catching and effective designs. Then I'm going to introduce you to some simple online design tools you can access for free. So the first topic that I'm going to talk about is some design tips. So the most important thing to do when you're creating designs for social media or for your emails is to make sure that you're tailoring your design to the location where they're going to appear. So think when you're creating an image, where is the image going to go? So this could be, for example, which social media platform will you use it on? Um, or will it go into your newsletter or emails? And the reason why this is important is because it, you want to consider who your audience is on the platform and what you already know about them. So what do they care about? What do they love? Um, do you know that your customers will be interacting? Fantastic. So I'm just gonna, do you, yeah. Um, do you know that they, for example, are most of your customers families? Um, are they animal lovers? Are they foodies? Do they love humor, nature? Are they really into food activism? Think about what you already know about your customers on the platforms where you're going to be showing these images. And another really important thing to think about is the dimensions and the size of the image that you're creating, because each social media platform has a different sized uh, image spec that you'd want to use for an image you create for that platform. Um, another example is if you're sending emails through MailChimp, MailChimp has a limit of the size of image that you can use. So when you're creating images, and I'm going to show you how everything about aspect ratios later and how to size your images, um, the right size for where you're going to post it. Um, it's just important to make sure you have the right size. So I thought I'd bring it up now. When I share the slides after the session, there's a useful link here, which will direct you to an always up-to-date guide on the right sizes for your social media images. And later on, when I introduce you to Canva, which is a really easy to use online tool, you'll see that all of the templates that you can use already have the perfect social media sizes on there. So it's gonna be really easy for you to do this. And the second tip that I wanna give is just to make sure that you think about the typography that you use. So typography is just the art and technique of arranging type to make written language legible, readable, and appealing when displayed. And so what makes really good typography? So the main thing is just make sure that whenever you're using text in an image, you make sure it's readable, not just legible, but readable. Is it big enough for people to see it clearly? Keep in mind if you're posting on social media that most people consume social media on their mobile phones. So whatever you think the size of a font needs to be, make it bigger. 
um, because people might be seeing on a very small screen. So to err on the side of caution, always use big text in your images if you're putting text in your images. And also think about the style. So what kind of tone would you like to convey with your words? Um, choose a font which matches that. And I've put like an example here um, at the bottom right where it says, this is a serious topic. And I've used the color orange and a not very serious font. So you can see here that the type of font I've used does not convey the, what I'm trying to say. Um, so it's just when you're using fonts, just keep in mind what tone you want to give with the writing that you, you're putting across. If you want it to be friendly, this is a good font to use. If you want it to be serious, maybe use a much kind of more simple font like this A here. Um, also try not to use too many fonts in your designs. I would always say use three fonts maximum. Um, and if you're just using one, like, yeah, either use one font um, or if you're gonna use two fonts, make the second font very different to the first font. So there's a nice contrast there. And the other thing that I'm gonna bring up here, and I bring it up in most webinars that I give, is that it's really important to maintain consistency wherever you can, because consistency builds trust and loyalty. So I would say at the beginning of the journey of learning how to make kind of bespoke images, which can have text overlaid on them, for example, choose some fonts and stick to them. Um, choose fonts that you want to associate with your food enterprise and try and use them over and over in your designs. And it just helps you to build this kind of, it's just a small thing, but it helps you to build that kind of consistency and repetition that help people to form a, yeah, form a connection and recognition um, with your images. Okay, so the other thing I want to talk about here is visual hierarchy. And I brought this example here to kind of show you that in every image you can, yeah, kind of organize the image to give certain things more impact than others. So visual hierarchy simply defined as just the use of visual cues such as color, typeface, size, and positioning to convey the relative importance of information and design. So essentially what this means is you just wanna make sure that your most important message is always the main focal point of the design. So here, for example, the word fire exit forest is the most important message they want to convey. So it really stands out in the scope of the picture. So just the thing that you want to convey is always the main point of focus in the, in the image. And by providing this kind of visual order, you can help your audience to understand the information in your image or post easier. And ease of understanding is, is really important in anything you write to your customers or images as well because a confused customer often says no. So you just wanna make things as easy as you can to understand for the person who's seen the image. So yeah, so just make sure as well that the most important text is in the biggest font and yeah, that the main message is the biggest focal point. So the next point I wanna make is that if you can, think about an image as a way to tell a story. Um, so what is your food enterprise's identity? How can you use your images to reinforce this identity and almost kind of build a story around your food enterprise in the minds of your customers? And this is can be called as like consistent branding, which really helps with recognition from your customers and it helps to build more trust and more customer loyalty. So you can achieve um, this kind of consistency through visuals. So think if you want to use repeated images, themes, fonts, colors, this is similar to what I was saying. And also create a story in your image through flow. And what I mean by this is create a path your audience can follow through your image. So a tip on this is place important eye-catching bits in the top left-hand corner. And that also links in with this idea of visual hierarchy because people usually look at the top left-hand side of an image first and then kind of move through the image. So it's just things to keep in mind that will make more sense as you're going through your journey of creating your own images. And also think about color theory. So by using color theory in your designs, you can get better results because different colors convey different, different feelings, different associations. And yeah, so when I showed the writing before of Use Great Typography and I put it in orange, that didn't give a very serious impression for the writing. You might want to use black or gray to give a more serious weighty um, sense to your writing. You might want to use red if it's to kind of 
like to convey like shock or a wall. Um, so it's just thinking about color in your designs and what kind of how that makes the viewer feel. There's a there's a link here which you can go to afterwards, which will take um, you to a site that describes all of the different colors and different associations that they have. And also one of the main things around color theory is the importance of creating the right kind of contrast between colors. And this is important for readability, because if you're using a color font on a color background, um, you need to check how they contrast together and avoid any visual vibration. Visual vibration is where the text and the background appear to like lead into each other. And that's due to a lack of contrast. So some colors don't overlay well and will actually create this funny kind of, yeah, the difficulty in reading them or telling them apart. And you've all seen maybe a website where people have used a color on, on, on a color background and it's you're really struggling and straining to read the writing. That's definitely not what you want your customers to feel when they're when they're reading or looking at your images. And that's yeah, so it's just something to keep in mind. And you can choose different styles of how colors compare. I put a few different types here and they give different senses. And I know if you don't know much about color theory, this can seem like a lot, but it's actually um, just different contrasts of colors provoke different types of feelings or sensations from those color combinations. So analogous, for example, is where colors are next to each other on the color wheel. So they match well and create serene and comfortable signs. Complementary colors are opposite each other on the color wheel and they create maximum contrast and maximum stability. And triadic are colors that are evenly spaced around the color wheel, which create a really harmonious look. This might seem like a lot, but it will, it will make more sense when I show you this really handy color wheel tool. And so this is something which Canva uses, and this will also be useful later when you're creating your own designs. So you can pick a color, and this is a great way to get started with what colors you might want to use repeatedly for your food enterprise. So you could pick any color that you like. Um, if there's a color that you're already using in your branding, you can find the color, the color code and put it in here, and I can show you how to do that on Canva. Um, or you could just spend a bit of time and just choose any color on this wheel that you like the color, like like the feeling of that you might want to use repeated through your designs. So this, um, the link to this is going to be in the slides after the session, which I'll share with you all. So you'll all be able to have access to this easily. So yeah, so to get started, you could just choose a color on here to so say if we choose a nice kind of, yeah, bluey, bluey green for now like a bright tea kind of color. And then here, you can choose from this list with different types of color combinations. So I hope that makes it a bit clearer what I was saying about analogous and all of these things. You can, this, this tool does it for you and it will help you pick colors that go well together in your designs. So for example, here, if you choose monochromatic, it's similar colors to each other. Um, say if we wanted to choose triadic which is where you can have three colors so this will give you three colors that contrast well so this is just a nice way to get started with looking at your colors and making sure that you choose colors that complement each other well so here we've got four different ones so this is just something you might want to play around with um so i'm going to go back to the slides okay and the next thing i want to talk about is the principle of proximity and that simply means that objects near each other are seen as a unit so it's simply the process of ensuring related design elements are placed together and any unrelated items are spaced apart. And this will help you to get, to help your audience to have a better understanding of your images. So it's essentially really simple of just placing things that are related together and unrelated apart. So if you're creating a poster, which I can, which you'll be able to do through the tool I'm gonna to show you later. If you're creating a poster, it means that group information that's connected together and separated from information that isn't so connected. And that helps your audience to understand your content better. Again, because a confused customer tends to feel no. Um, because if, yeah, when things are close together, it, people assume that they're connected or they have a relationship to each other. Um, and you can also group things together with color or size and yeah, this just, generally helps you to organize and give structure to the layout and helps you to bring concepts and ideas together through their relationships on the page or on the post. 
And the last thing, so this is the last bit of the slides and we'll get on to using the tool. So I hope that wasn't too much of me talking about the one thing, but um, the last tip is to use balance. And there are lots of different types of balance that you can use in your designs. The most simple one is symmetrical. So it's just trying to kind of balance two things on either side of the design. Um, asymmetrical, you, if you use asymmetrical balance in your, in your images, this is quite a nice tool for creating energy and tension through contrast. Because, and it also can create images that are really visually interesting by creating balance with different objects. So if you had one large object on the left and one small object on the side, on the right side, it's not symmetrically balanced, it's asymmetrically balanced, but it work, it can work well as an interesting balance in your images. Radial is um, where elements radiate outwards, and that can be a useful way to create focus on a central point in an image. So imagine a spiral with one word at the center and it takes the eye straight to the word in the center. Um, and also crystallographic, that's the type of balance that's about repetition. Um, it can also be called mosaic or all over balance. So to imagine that one, imagine you're looking down on a tray of donuts or a tray of eggs. So it's not something you might initially think of as an appealing image, but actually it can, like these kind of top-down crystallographic type balance images can create a really nice effect. Um, and also don't forget about negative space. And what I mean by negative space is this, these eggs demonstrate, well, these eggs demonstrate asymmetrical balance perfectly, but they also demonstrate a really effective use of negative space. Try and make sure you leave a lot of blank space in your images as well, and that can kind of give like a less chaotic appearance, less jumbled. Um, the kind of blank space in your design is as important as what you put into the design. So it's just to keep that in mind as well. So to move on to our first tool for the day, it's getting started with Canva. Has, has anyone had any experience with Canva so far as this new to everybody? I use it and I pay for the pro as well because oh. I use it a lot in all my days. Great. I've I've just had um I have had a go with it and I've just put a couple of posts up but the first time was fine because I had somebody telling me how to do it. Yeah. And when I was trying to make the post yesterday or the day before I thought I was going to start kicking and screaming because I couldn't make anything work anymore. So um I'm really looking forward to seeing about how to do it again. Okay, great. Yeah, it's very frustrating sometimes when, yeah, things things just don't work. How, uh, yeah, I, I, I feel you on that one. I've, I've been through that process before with lots of different design tools. Um, but with this, we're going to be going through right from scratch, setting up an account and how to create the first image. So we'll be going straight back to basics, which might help you with that process of where you might have gone wrong. Um, the other thing is... Um, yeah, in the Q&A session at the end, if you've got any specific things that you want to, you would like help with on Canva, that would be a great space to bring them up. Or we could even do a more advanced session for some more advanced designs. Um, but I will get started, like mostly from the basics and walking through. So um, I'll be really interested in the Q&A, Ruth, if you've got any um, thoughts about the pro version, if it's worth getting. Because um, I haven't actually used the pro version myself, because I normally use different. I normally use um, Photoshop and InDesign for my designs, but I used to use Canva a lot, but not as a pro version. So I'm interested to hear about it. Yeah, uh, it's got a lot of um, additions in it now. So excellent. for the price it is, if you're not using anything else, it may be worth looking at. Yeah, especially the scheduling, because you can now schedule from there. Excellent. Cool. So really interested to hear about that at the end. Um, you're, okay. you're more of the specialist on that than me in this session. <laughs> um, Don't go that far. <laughs> uh, and, okay, so next slide. So free design with Canva. So I'm going to click here and log into the account. I'm going to close. Yeah, I'll keep that. So, so this is when you go straight to the first page on Canva. This is what it will look like to set up your own account. You just put in your email here. So I'm going to use hello. I just hope I don't have an account already with this email. Leave.co.uk. And oh, sorry, click sign up. It's not a great start. <laughs> New to Canva, sign up, and it's just at the bottom here. And then get started with Canva. 
you can sign up with your Google accounts or Facebook if you wanted, or you can sign up in the old fashioned way with an email, which I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna put my name here and then my email. That's my partner's email. He's upcycled mushrooms, mushroom grower. So I'm using his name <laughs> these days, a bit, a bit better than mine. Um, and then my password, cool. And then get started, it's free. Oh, I already have an account. Sorry, I didn't. Okay, and I've got some other funky emails that I don't use, so maybe this one. That looks good. Okay, cool. So here's my lovely shiny new Canva account. So I'm just gonna wait for it to load. Cool. So here you can choose what you will be using Canva for. Um, so you can choose anything from here. I'm actually just gonna go for small business. Um, I'm gonna skip this bit. And I'm going to say maybe later to try and kind of pro for free. Let's see what Rita has to say about, say about that later. I'm going to skip that and get the most out of Canva. And this is for, to join my email list. So skip that and then start your first design. So you can start from here. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to not do that. And I'm going to start from scratch in the, well, actually, maybe we do start here. Okay, I'm gonna go back to home. Sorry, that was a... Okay, so exit out of that box just by clicking outside of it, not in the way that I did. And then this is your general Canva homepage. So on here, this has all of the different types of templates that you can use to get started. Um, also, when you first open this up, you'll have these little boxes that show up and just help to guide you around Canva, and <coughs> which is sometimes a good place to get started as well. So I'm going to close that. So here, it's a page where it's just showing all the different types of things you can create. If you go here to all your designs, once you've created a design, this is where it's going to be stored. So in your main home page, when you go into Canva, this is the first page that comes up. This is where all your designs that you've made previously will be. So if you're trying to find them, it's just on this menu on the left. Here is something called a brand kit. And this is a really nice pro feature, actually. It used to be one of the free features, but it's been moved to pro. So this might be something that you want to play with if you do get the pro version. But what we can do here, and the reason I'm taking you here now is because there's one thing you can still do in the brand kit. So if you go here first, you can create your own palette. So this might be a good starting point for you when you start with Canva to choose some colors that you want to use for your, for your enterprise and put them in your brand palette. And the reason why is that whenever you start a new design, the same colors will be there ready for you to use from that new design page. So it's just a way of helping you create that consistency that I was talking about earlier. So on the home page, go to brand kit, add a new palette, and then you can just start adding colors here. So if you click the plus, so now I'm gonna connect what I was talking about earlier with the color wheel to this so you can have both open at the same time. So if you look at my tabs here, I've got the color wheel and I've got the brand kit open. So I'm gonna to go to the color wheel. I'm gonna click on that. And you see how I, we had this nice kind of very vibrant turquoise color. I might go for this color for a demonstration. So this code here will help you take this color over to your brand kit. So I'm gonna highlight this and I'm going to copy it, and then I'm going to paste it into this box here, which will help me to collect the colors that I want. So there, you see the colors pull through. So I'm gonna add another color. And if I go back to my color wheel, I might pick this lovely red. And actually it's easy, you can just click to copy, which makes your life a bit easier than what I was just doing. Um, and then, copy, paste it here, and you've got, so you're starting to build these colors that you've gained from the color wheel, and you're putting them in here, and it's something to do at the beginning, because then you can just use them in your designs really easily. I'll do it one last time, which is this rather funky, vibrant lime green. And, okay, so if you want more than three colors, then you're getting blocked by the pro version, so. This is our brand palette for today.
So I'm going to go back to recommended for you. And that's essentially your home screen where you have all of your different types of posts and things you can create. So when I spoke earlier about aspect ratios or the sizes of your images, this is where you can pick the right size image for what you want to do with it, for the location where you're going to put the image. So for example here, if I hover over Instagram post, if you're using Instagram, you'll see that the posts are squares. So this automatically sets up a square post view in the right size for Instagram. So this is a great place to create your images because they'll always be the right size for the platform that you're using them on. So in the aspect ratio, if you've ever seen that anywhere, it's this, it's the amount, it's the size of the image in pixel form. So this is like a one to one ratio image or 1080 by 1080 pixels. So let's start with an Instagram post, but if you look along here, I don't know if you can see, um, then you can see there's lots of different things you can create as well. You can actually click on this tab here for social media, which gives you all of the different dimensions of, you know, for example, here a Facebook post. So yeah, let's perhaps let's start with a Facebook post. So I'm gonna click on this and we'll open it up. So going right from the start of how to create images. Again, when you start, you will have this guide from Canva. So you'll also, if you're starting from scratch, you'll kind of have a little bit of hand holding for, from Canva through the process, which is helpful. But I'm gonna close that and we'll get started. Um, so here, so let me explain. On the left is essentially all the things that you can use in your image. So you've got lots of different templates that are pre-created that you can use, which are always a helpful place to start. So you can skim through and you can have a play, dedicate some time to having a look through, see if there's anything you really like here or any styles. You can also search. So for example, if I chose food, it shows you different kind of food type themes. So some nice ones here. And then once you have it, say if we pick one, this one, it will automatically drop the template into your design space. Then, if you want to edit this, you can, is that a pro version? Let's see, looks like it's got a thing on it. No, it's free. Um, so you can click on any of the bits that you'd like to edit and edit them. So you could keep the design very much how it is and you could just click in and you could change it to anything that you like. So say, let's call this Open Food Network. Um, and you can change all of this text and it just gives you, to, yeah, this is a pro design. So sometimes if you see these weird things, it means that you need Canva Pro. A lot of them are free and you don't need that. I just didn't check this one before I put it yeah. in. But if you click remove watermark, it will take you through the steps to try Canva Pro, but we're starting with the free version for now. Okay, so what I'm gonna show you here is a way to, whenever, if anything ever goes wrong. They're meant, they're meant to be for have that uh, one. Pardon, sorry? Oh, Oh, okay, sorry, so that was me. Um, so this button here is your is your friend. So this is the undo button. So I'm gonna press the undo button and it will help me get rid of, first of all, what I've written and then that template. So if you wanna undo anything, this is your button here. So another thing that I actually should have mentioned at the beginning is this box here, is where you can label always name your design because later on it will get way too complicated to if you've got lots and lots of designs it will start getting complicated if they're all called undesign, untitled design one untitled design two so if you write for example christmas post and we do a nice themed christmas post today um christmas post facebook and this just helps you to start to organize your designs and it will save the file as, as christmas post facebook so if you don't want to use a template, you can actually design from scratch yourself. And I'm going to show you how to do that today. So the templates are an easy way to get started. Choose the template, drop your own details in, and then you're good to go. If you want to design something of your own, you've got all of these different things here to help you. So we could start with a background, which we can choose from here. So you can choose some different designs, or you can choose some different colors here. If I click on this, it will bring up my color palette. So whenever you see the palette symbol, 
that will then bring up your brand colors. So it's what we were talking about earlier, keeping that consistency. You can start to make sure that you're using the same colors throughout. Um, if you wanted to choose something snazzy, you can pick one of the templates here. Maybe we see if they have anything Christmas related. And I've spelled Christmas wrong. Oh, have I? No, it's fine. And we've got some, what well, looks like twinkling lights. So you could, for example, pick your own background. Again, if you want to undo, press undo. So that's always, and you can also redo as well. So you can switch, switch between the two. So that's a really useful tool when you're getting frustrated. If you've done something, you don't know what you've done, undo it. Um, if you've accidentally deleted something and you didn't want to delete it, undo, and it will bring it back. So it's just these two buttons are really helpful. You can also here upload your own media. So this is really great if you've got your own images, if you've taken your own photos that you want to use, this is where you would put them in. Um, I just want to check if everyone's okay and if everyone's following, if I'm going too fast or does, does, is this okay? Yes, fine for me. Perfect, thank you. Just if you've got any questions or if I'm going too fast, just jump in and tell me to repeat myself or slow down. So, so in the board, your design board on the left, on the upload section, that's where you can upload your own photos. So I'm gonna do a little sidestep here and I'm gonna show you a really useful place that for free images. So if you don't have your own images, you can try and find them here. So I'm gonna to go to, there's a link in the slides that I'm gonna show after and it's called Pixabay and it's a good place to get started. And it's basically a website with just tons and tons and tons of free images that you can use. So I'm going to search here for Christmas food to get started. And let's find, and yeah, so from here, I could download a couple of images. Perhaps we download this nice roast turkey or the Christmas biscuits. So to download images from here, you click on the image you like and you press free download, you choose the size you want. So I'm gonna go for the middle size. And what this is, is this is then like that showing you the pixel size of the image, which when we saw earlier, when I was showing you the aspect ratios of Instagram are 1080 by 1080, this is essentially talking about the same thing, but don't let that put you off or feel confusing. It's just telling you about the size of the image. So say if we just, we know that that image size will fit with what we're doing. So, Let's click download and click download. Some you can register, or if you don't register, they still let you use the images. You just have to prove you're not a robot. Download. So this is now saved to my computer. And I'm going to go back to our design. And then if I go back to upload and I click upload media, and I'm going to upload from my device. And then here, sorry, Pat always has loads of images of mushrooms everywhere. <laughs> um, and if I go to my downloads, I've downloaded Biscuit. In your computer, if you've got any images that you've taken yourself, you can, choose, you can choose, find them in your computer, in your pictures, and add them from here. So this is the Biscuit image. And then, as you can see here, it's a really useful, handy feature that Canva has. It's that it saves your images in Canva for use later. So we've now got this image essentially stored in this images section on Canva. And that means that you can use it in this design, but you'd also be able to use it in other designs. So when you next click uploads on another design, all of the images that you previously uploaded will be stored here. So that's really handy and it will save you from trawling through your computer to find your favorite images. So if I click on this and then it's input it into my design space. So you see, you can see now that it's not the right size for the image. So I can use these pointers here to resize it to the right size that I want. So I'm gonna make it to the same size as the image here because I want to show you something. So we can see there's this white gap here. If you want to fit the image to the size, you can drag and pull it over. And then this will show, and you can also like move it around as well just by clicking on it and dragging it around. Is that okay? Does that make sense to everyone so far? If there's no answer, then I'm gonna assume that everyone's happy. So 
Um, so yeah, so you can move it around, you can resize it and you can stretch it out to fill the whole spec of the image. So then the next thing you might want to do, oh, the next thing I want to mention is that if you don't want to go to Pixabay and choose your own images. So this is our background. Um, we have the option of choosing photos from Canva. And then also there's other elements that we can add to our design here. So if you click on elements, you can see all of these different things that you can play with. So the trick is with Canva is to dedicate a little bit of time to just getting used to all the little things that you can use and just, yeah, have a play with the different things that are available. From this, you can use lots of different added things. You can, for example, we could search, um, I don't know, maybe we could start simple and add a shape. So I'm gonna add a square. And if you click on it, it will appear in your picture. And I think if we're lucky, it's appeared in our brand color. No, almost very close. So here, when this, if you click on the square that you just make sure that it's highlighted. And so to show which element of your design you're working with, you'll see this border with these circles. The circles help you to resize it. And the, and, but when you, this just shows that this is the element that you're working with. If you wanna work on another element, you just click on the other element and now it's showing that we're working with this, but we want to work with the square that we just added to our design. So I'm going to click on that and you'll see here in the top left corner is the color that the square has come up in. You can click on this and you can change the color of the square. You can also choose one of your brand colors, which we put into our palette earlier. So this is where it's showing you how useful it is to do that thing at the beginning and pick the colors that you like to work with the most. So I'm going to use this red because it feels kind of Christmassy. And then because we're working with this piece, you can then resize it any way you want. When you've got these little lines, that shows you you can change the size of the shape or the dimensions or how the shape looks. And the round ones in the corner will just change the size, but keep the, keep the shape the same shape it is, but will change the size. So. I'm going to leave it this size so we've got that in the center and then here along the left again you can choose the different things to work with and now i'm going to add some text to design so if i click on the t for text it has all of these different designs these are just very simple um, settings you need to use a heading a subheading or a little bit of text and you've also got all of these slightly more special designs um, which are pre-made for you and you can drop into your design so you can scroll through this and see if there's any that you really like you can search for um, different themes that you might like to use, or if there's a font that, or a style that you've used before, you can find it through searching. And yeah, so you can have a look, see if there's anything you like, but I'm gonna start super from basics and add my own heading and change the font later. So if I click add a heading, I've then got the heading here, but I want it on the box. So if I click on it, I can then move this around. So if you click and hold the click down, you can then pick it up and move it around your design. So I'm gonna move it here. When you found the place where you wanna put it, if you let go, it just drops into place. I want this to fit within the box. So again, using these really useful little things to reshape it. So if I do it that- It doesn't automatically, it doesn't automatically fit the box. No, so you'd have to resize it yourself. Um, it depends because I think you can also click on like so let me just delete that one and we'll try again if I click on the box and then click on add a heading it will create it the same size as the box I guess but it doesn't seem to have placed it in the box so this is so you're going to have to click and move it yourself what you noticed here as well is when it first arrives it arrives highlighted and the reason why is because then you can type in your own text so while it's highlighted, if you type in what you want it to say, like for example, Christmas, and then click away from the box, then you can click on it and move it. So I'm just gonna explain that bit again, just in case. It, so when, when the box is highlighted, this means that it's ready for you to type in and change the text. But if you try and move it, it won't work. And that can be really frustrating. So it's these little kind of things that just take a bit of time to get used to. So I'm gonna do this again from scratch. So if I delete that, and if I click add a heading, now it's appeared there, which is interesting, but either way, you can see that it's highlighted when it first arrives. That means you won't be able to move it 
until you click away from it once and then you click back on it to move it. And then if you want to highlight it again to type text, you just do one single click. So, and then to, that's essentially puts the cursor in the text for you. And then you can delete this by double clicking to highlight it, or you can delete it by backspacing, whichever works for you, or that you remember how to do in the time. And then if you type Christmas, that could, that could be a typing, but again, you won't be able to move it until you click away and then click back on it and then click and hold and move. Is that, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Cool, that's the, that, these are the kind of the little things that can feel really clunky when, for example, if you've got a cursor and then you click and move it and then it yeah. highlights things and it, it, it can be quite frustrating. So it's just remember if you're struggling to move it, click away from the box, click back on it and then you should be able to move it again. And this will just um, Kaylee, are you going to have bullet points about this? Yeah, so I'm actually following up this session uh, with a blog and the blog is going to have this video and it's going to have a link to the slides, but also I'm going to have everything I've spoken about in my bullet points um, of all of the bits about design theory. And with this particular session where we're walking through it together, um, I will share some links that will help help you walk you through this in, in, in for example, in like a easy spelled out detail. So I, I know sometimes it's hard to learn watching someone else do something and it's a lot easier to learn when you're doing it yourself or working through it yourself. So I think I, I wanted to show you just some of the basics today and then there'll be a couple of things to follow up the session that might make it a bit easier. And then also I wanna do a follow up as well where once you've had a little bit of time to play with Canva, then we can kind of re-meet and I, like find out if there's any things that have been sticky for you or that you've struggled with. So it'll be a bit more of a practical session um, where we can kind of work on points that you've maybe struggled with in real, in your real practice with, with this software. So yeah, so this shows you just like the basics of, of doing a design on Canva. And just looking at the time, there's one thing I wanna show you before we go, but first of all, just to let you know that this saves automatically. So there's no risk of you losing your work, but just check before you leave the page that it says all changes saved here. Um, just to make sure that the last bit's updated. So I'm gonna go back, if you wanna go back to the home page, click this button here and that takes you back to the main page. So I'm gonna click on that and then I'm gonna show you how to find this design again. So if we click on all your designs and then you've got your design here. So you'll be able to see everything that you've created in this section here on Canva, which has been useful. So if I click on this, Again, it will open it. And then if you then want to download this for your social media, you can either publish it through Canva if you've connected your Facebook account to Canva, which I'll probably show how to do in another session. Or if anyone um, wants to learn how to do that, feel free to DM me on, on, to message me on Facebook and I can share the steps how to do it. Um, but you can also click here. So I'm just gonna move our place of the way. So click on these three dots in the top right-hand corner and then it gives you a list of things you can do. And um, if you want to save this on your computer so you can then share it on Facebook, you can click download and then click download here. And this is where you can also change um, the size, but I think that's a pro feature, um, which is quite useful if you want to resize an image that you already have. Um, but that could be a session for um, when we do a bit more of a detailed advanced session or an intermediate session follow, follow up to this. So you can click on download prepares your design and it will save it onto your computer so that then when you're in Facebook, you can then upload this design that you've created. So, and on your computer, it should show up either in the bar here or in your file explorer in your, in your downloads here. So yeah, so that's how to create basic designs in Canva. In the home page, again, you can do all sorts of different designs. You can choose Instagram stories, Instagram posts, and the specs and the dimensions are all there ready for you. And there's one thing I want to show you just before we have a little bit of time for a Q&A, and that's something called Giphy. So if I just explain what Giphy is through the slides, then, so, I've got some examples here. So first of all, what is a GIF? 
So a GIF is a way to animate images in the smallest possible file size. So essentially you've got a file that's as small as a picture, but it has a really short animated animation. This is very effective on social media because it's both eye-catching and it can also like help with, uh, you may have heard me talking about the three E's before when you think about social posting. Is it entertaining? Is it emotional? Is it educational? GIFs are really good for entertainment because often they're quite funny. They can be, there's lots of very cute ones. Um, and yeah, it's a good way to, so yeah, it's a good way to kind of capture attention. Um, so it can help you stand out. It can make your feed more interesting and show off your produce in a fun way. So now I'm gonna take you to a site called Giphy. And again, this is a link that will be in the slides that I'll, I'll share with you all in the Facebook group just after this session. So you can have a look at this yourself tonight if you want to. And this is Giphy. If you just wanna share GIFs on Facebook, there's, or on social media, you can actually click, if you don't wanna create your own, you can use ones that have been pre-made um, just by when you're doing a post, there's a button to choose GIF and you can search from a list of different GIFs. So you can choose something that someone else has made um, or you can make your own. And I might, this is taking a while to load, so I might actually leave the link for you to have a play with it's once you go in it's there's also lots that you can choose from but i might postpone this for another follow-up session because i feel like a, there's already been quite a lot of information and it's taking a while to load so this is essentially what giphy looks like and if you click the create button you can follow the steps to create your own own gif so if, i want to close this down now so that we can have um, a little bit of time for q a so i realized i've kind of run over a little bit of my um, session because of the gap in the middle. So sorry about that. So does anyone have, I realize that's quite a lot um, at once, but does anyone have any questions or any particular bits we might want to follow up on in another session? Well, I think it was fascinating and I can't wait to get and start playing um i just know that it wasn't quite as straightforward as you made it sound when i was trying to um and i i wonder if i went into the wrong place what did what was the website you did you did just canva.com yeah so i'm gonna I, if i share the screen again quickly i will um just show you so if you go i'm gonna open the internet so if i just go to canva com and I, sh I should still be logged in so if you're in a place on Canva that you're finding confusing if you just exit and just restart it and then you know that you'll always be at this home page so that you won't get confused with where you're going so or if you want at any point just type in canva.com and it will take you right back to the home page so I appreciate sometimes when you're using a new site it can be easy to get lost into the different spaces if you are here, if you want to create posts, I'd go to the social media, for social media, go to the social media tab and choose something on here that says what it's for. So for example, an Instagram post, or if we scroll to the right, we a Facebook post. And you've also got some more things downside if you want to, down at the bottom, if you want to do things like a post or a flyer. Um, so I would say with navigating Canva, this home button is always your friend, so it will just take you back to where to start and also you can find all your designs again. So if you were, yeah, in a, do you, do you remember what you were trying to create? Was it a social post? Yeah, it's, it is uploaded on Facebook. Okay. Um, but uh, the thing was, I, I couldn't get it to download. I couldn't work how to do it. Eventually, I think what I eventually did was downloaded it, or actually I didn't, my son mm -hmm. downloaded it to, my computer and then I uploaded it to the Facebook page yeah that's so um there are always ways around but it's much nicer if you the if you learn the best way of doing it then it's much quicker and you'll do it yeah. more often because I've yeah. got so much so little time yeah but um to spend hours and hours playing which is yeah. fun you know, I just don't do it in the end. So that's why this is wonderful to see this. Yeah, not very, it's not very practical, is it? If you're trying to do something in a quick time and then- If you're on your- Yeah. 
So just for the future, so I'm just going to show you Sorry, again. Hayley. If you're on your iPad. Yeah, what? If you're on your iPad, when you save your files, it'll go straight into your photos. Uh -huh. That might help you, Sarah. Uh-huh, okay. I'm usually doing it on my on my laptop, but mm. so. So I'm gonna, it, you think, yeah. I'm just gonna go back to this and I'm just gonna show you for next time. Um, it did, it's, it did, it's these three buttons here can give you all the different options of where, of, of how to take this file from here and onto your computer. And if you click download, um, from these three buttons. There's a quick one here, but I'd go here and then download. Then that will save it as a, as a file on your computer. And then to find that, if you've got a, a Windows computer, you can go to your file manager and it should be in the downloads folder. And so I hope, I hope that's helpful, helpful, but I know sometimes if you're spending lots of time trying to find a thing, um, it's frustrating. So it's just a question of... of learning how to do it once properly and then it's you know stays there it's yeah. just messing around for hours before you know yeah so i think yeah so when it should be with any design that you make on canva the way to download it or to save it is always because it is always the top three buttons and then it's this arrow here to download it to your computer and that means essentially then you've got the file on your computer ready to upload on facebook so I hope that next time that makes it easier. If you get stuck at all, if you get stuck on this, just drop um, a message in the the Thriving Food Hub's Facebook group, and I can walk through the steps with you there and help you. So I, I know it's frustrating. <laughs> so, um, so I'm I'm really interested actually um, to hear from Ruth about what your what your thoughts were on Canva Pro and yeah, um, if you think it's if you think it's worthwhile and and if it's made an impact for you. Um, one of the things I like about it is the magic resizing of the post, so you can create it. If you want to do an Instagram post, then you realise you don't. You want it for an A4 poster. You've got the magic resize. You haven't got to start faffing around and resizing it individually. Um, I prefer the choice of photos actually that you get in Pro than you get in Xavier or anywhere like that. But that's my choice. You've also now got scheduling is in there. So you can actually schedule your posts to various social media platforms. Mm -hmm. And you've also got things like it or remove the background from pictures and things like that. If you, if you like a template, but you don't like some of it, you can just remove part of it with the automatic remove background. And it's only 10.99 a month. I know that's 10.99 on top of another 10.99 that you're paying elsewhere. But for me with, one, two, what, what hats, I've got about four or five different hats on. It works out about two pound a business, but I, I would still pay for it just for one business, just for what it gives me. Awesome, thank you. Uh, I remember on another um, talk you did that you could set that you could schedule on um, Facebook and I, I couldn't remember how to do that. Could yeah, can so, you very briefly tell me how to do that again? Yeah, so scheduling on Facebook. Um, so I've, I've done a couple of webinars um, around social media. What I'm thinking about doing as well is a, short how-to video um, on that topic. Um, and you can use a couple of things. If you're doing it straight into your Facebook, um, you can use publishing tools, but there's also something called the Facebook Creator Studio, which is a good place to do it also. Um, I can show you quickly now, but I think I, because I'm logged into my partner's computer, it's gonna be his Facebook. So I think you don't know how happy it'll be if I accidentally share something. Well, don't worry if you don't want to do that. You can just it tell me. On Business Suite, I think that it offers it to you. Um, very. Have you, Helen? Have you got Business Suite? No. No. Oh well, no. It, it's quite That's a new. That's the updated thing. pages app on um, a computer. Mm. Um, and then it 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 offers you. It's the just the updated pages it's app, Sarah. What? Business Suite. It's just the updated pages app. They've now just rebranded it Business Suite. Okay. Oh yes, I know. Yes, yes. So let me let me share. Let me just share. I can show quickly as long as that's okay. Because really. it'd be really good just to be able to do them all in one session and then you're done. Hmm. Definitely. Um, scheduling is a really useful thing to do for short for time because you also you could sit 
spend half an hour scheduling your posts for a week, um, which means that you don't have, to, yeah, if you're doing it kind of spread out through the week, it can take you 10 minutes to get into doing the thing. And then if you have to keep, yeah, we're doing that, it makes a lot more time sense to do it all at once. So now I'm in Pat's um, Facebook. I'm going to go to his business page, which is Upcycled Mushrooms. Sorry, Pat. <laughs> Um, you won't mind. I actually also admin his page, so it just also my internet's a bit slow tonight for some reason, so I'm apologizing for this. Um, uh, you know, actually, Helena, my internet seems, ah, here we go. No, it's fine. So, upside with mushrooms. I think it might be a bit slow for me to do it, but if you go to your, your page, mm -hmm. your, your enterprise, so say here I'm on Patrick's page, Upcycled Mushrooms. So right. if you look on the left-hand side menu, you'll see here lots of different options. And what you want to go to is publishing tools. So if I click on that, it takes me to another page, eventually. Sorry, <laughs> Sorry about okay. my screen. Um, it will take me to another page, which will give me the option to schedule posts in advance. And okay. But so the thing that you want is on the left-hand menu, it's called publishing tools. And that's something that you can What's do. What's it called, with. sorry? It's called publishing tools. Publishing forms. Uh, tools. 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 Okay. And it will show you, um, there's, there's a few different options when it loads. and. I'm sorry about the delay with my internet, but when you go into publishing tools, you'll see a list on the left that gives you a few different options. And one of them is to schedule your posts. So you can click create post right. there, and then you can choose the date. The other thing you can do is you can actually do it whenever you are creating a post, there's an option to schedule as well. Um, they changed the layout for Facebook for scheduling posts. Um, recently publishing tools here is a very new thing. So if, um, ah, here we go, it's loaded. So you can go to publish post here and you want on it, there's another list on your left after you've gone to publishing tools and you want to go to scheduled posts. And, hmm, so this is new. So yeah, you are right, it is now a business suite. Seems like it changes on Facebook yeah. every, every month. That's the joy of being in digital marketing. <laughs> constantly the downside of the business suite is you can't if you've scheduled a post you can't go back in and edit it you have to delete it if you want to change it if That's you do okay. it in facebook business manager or creator studio you can edit it yeah that's really annoying so yeah there's there's a they're probably trying to push people onto creator studio so the reason why is because on creator studio you can also post both on your facebook and your instagram at the same time um, so if we go, and what's that called? Creator what's Studio. That? It's it's the oh. face, Facebook Creator Studio, and there's lots of how to. So what I'll do is after this session, I'm also going to share some links that will help you with this. Um, this also means that probably my one of my webinars on scheduling is already out of date, even though it's from the summer. So thank you, Facebook. <laughs> um, but I'll share some links to some how tos to to do this later. Um, if you go to Create Studio, it will actually step you through the process. So I'll share this link afterwards in the slides um, and also in the Facebook group so you can get started with this and that should help you, Helen. Sorry, this is a bit of a okay. kind of confusing answer to your question, um, but I will, <laughs> okay. yeah, I'll, I'll do something a bit more kind of specific on, on Facebook if that's, if that's something that's of interest. Interesting. Awesome. Anyone else have any questions? Need to go and play. <laughs> awesome. Other people use Instagram <laughs> as well as Facebook. I'm not. Um, the Creator Studio, because Instagram and Facebook are now essentially one, or they're kind, they're not one platform, but they're owned. Um, Instagram is now owned by Facebook. It means that the Creator Studio is really useful because you can actually do your post for Instagram through the Creator Studio as well as for Facebook. 
So I might do a session just on that. Um, so it seems like that would be that would be useful and that would be a beginner session so we can go through the first steps together. Um, yeah, and I'll send some links as well in the I know um Kay will say the same because I've heard I'm saying this because Kay said that. So <laughs> <laughs> um she's the but, expert, not me. But the, the good thing the good thing about doing Instagram and Facebook is you can actually put up an Instagram face. Uh, post and it'll go automatically onto Facebook which means you've got a double whammy if you're very short of time which I am all the time um, to have them both and I've still managed um, I've still managed in the last couple of months to double my number of followers so on that's on Instagram not on Facebook um, so I'm I think it's quite good to do it both of them it's one post and two platforms. I, I I'd agree with that as well. I, I find Instagram, um, because you can post it on Instagram, and then it automatically goes to Facebook. It really does save, save so much time. And you can do the same with the stories as well. If you create a story, you can then share that to Facebook too. So I haven't got to grips with all these lovely things like Creator Studio and things yet. So just in terms of saving time, I found that easier. And you can always create your own personal account to, to practice things on, which is what I did. So I made all my mistakes and privacy yeah. settings and, and published things that I didn't mean to on my own profile before I, I was let loose on on the um on the on the, the work one. So yeah, you could always try doing that as well. What just while you get grips to grips with it. Okay. Thank you. Awesome. Great advice. Thanks, Kate. Cool. Sorry, I dipped out again. I really don't know why Zoom keeps kicking me out, but I'm really, yeah, sorry about some of the technical glitches today. Um, and yeah, um, just, I, I feel like I kind of just jumped in at the tail end of that, but it sounded like some really wonderful advice was being shared throughout the group. So really happy about that. And also really well done, Sarah, if you've been able to double your followers on Instagram, you're obviously doing the right thing. So that's something to celebrate. And uh, yeah, and what Kate mentioned about posting, choosing the platform that you like the most and then posting from there and then connecting your accounts with the other account essentially post automatically is a really great way to save time. And also it's nicer for you if you're working mostly with the, the platform that you find the easiest and that you enjoy working in the most. Um, I always say that I think with social media, it's, it's better to do one platform really well and then maybe have another platform ticking over in that way and to try <laughs> that's and what Louise, Louise said. said that yeah <laughs> okay. that's what she said you'd say <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what I'd say <laughs> yeah. yeah otherwise it's just trying to do all the things all the time is is sometimes not sustainable and I think the best social media plan or strategy is always the one that works best for you with the time that you have and yeah so and I'm sure your customers appreciate it if you can show up in a space kind of Un, unirritated by having to be in that space so yeah it would be really any... nice actually oh sorry no no so what sorry, were you going to no. say Kate? I was just going to say it would be really nice if we could all kind of like maybe in, in the comments from like this like just pop down where we are so we can all follow each other yes, and actually um yeah follow each other and see what we're doing on Facebook and Instagram because I'm sure there's a, a ton of things that I could I could learn um, like from all of you guys and what you're doing too. I think that'd be really nice. Well, I'm just starting out in marketing. I've never done anything like this before. So I'm, I'm really, no. you know, sort of level one. And I know I've got a long way to go. It'd be just, just nice to network and we could ask each other questions yeah. about, you know, what we did or how we did it. Um, just sort of on the back of the session. I think that'd be really nice to, to keep in, in touch on that because there's still so hey. much stuff that I'm learning. Katie, where do you mean us to post it? even just in in the comments i mean i'm kent food hubs folkston but i could like in the comments from this event for example we could just put in On Facebook, i've already commented mean, okay. yeah yeah so, i've i've already put in there panicking help i can't get in i'm in the waiting room <laughs> so i just yeah, i could just sorry, um, tag tag mine maybe like in there and and the um the link to instagram as well um, and we could all we could all see what what each other are doing, and then if anyone of us does something particularly brilliant with Canva, then we can all pounce on you and say, "How did you do that?" And just just sort of follow it up and um, keep yeah. it keep it fresh. Be interesting to see what everybody's doing as well, what products yeah. you're producing and where you are. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 
Yeah. I think that's such a wonderful idea. Thank you, Kate, for that idea. Um, I, I love it. And yeah, it, uh, that would be a good place to kind of keep in touch with each other for now in the, the event where you all registered on Facebook. Um, maybe it's something for me to think about, about how to manage the Facebook group, if we could have like almost like breakout rooms, which might work for kind of keeping keeping people in contact after these sessions. So watch the space. I might have something else mm. from that that we could we could use to so that the conversation could almost continue. So I think like the, the kind of supporting yeah. each other through this is, is, is yeah, it's, it's a really great way to do social media because then essentially you've also got like a good group afterwards for like feedback, but then also potentially for sharing each other's things and helping to spread awareness and, and recognition and some, yeah. And it will help you with the social algorithms as well if you're sharing each other's content. So it might be yeah. a nice thing to think about. So thank you. So in, I'm going to put this in the comments, Katie, for today's um, webinar on, on the yeah. thriving. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and I'll, okay. I'll put our links in there too. Okay. Yeah. Great. And then when I get stuck on camera, I don't have to bother Kaylee all the time. I can come and ask you guys too. <laughs> yeah, so you uh, oh. ask. Ruth is the one. She's the genius. Awesome. <laughs> well, I shall make sure that I'm following don't Ruth. Don't push then. it, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just writing down Ruth's name in my notes. Sorry, Ruth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm changing it quick. <laughs> Excellent. And the other thing is also even even just like again, if if you if if you like each other's posts, yeah, you know, it's 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 a really nice thing to do because just a few likes will help you do better with the algorithm, which means that more of your customers will see your posts. So, if you can create those kinds of groups on social media when you support each other just by liking each other's posts, it will help you all to yeah to be able to get more people to see your your posts. So it's really great to create these kinds of group connections. I know on Instagram, it happens a lot where people create kind of almost like um, like social circles on Instagram where they always like each other's posts. And I think that's a really nice way to, yeah, to ensure that you're all getting better results with reaching your customers on social media. So this is a great, really great thing to do. Awesome, everybody. So nice to see you this evening. and. Just want to apologize again about the technical difficulties. Hope it didn't get in the way of the session too much. Um, I'm going to be probably editing those out of the video. So I'm probably not going to post the video till tomorrow, um, but I'll post it and the slides. You'll have all of the links from the session and I'm available in the Facebook mm -hmm. group. Usually on Tuesdays to Thursdays, I'll be hovering and checking it every day. So if you've got any questions or need any kind of yeah support, I'm there. So. Cool, so I realize we've overrun because it's been such a fab conversation afterwards. So thanks everyone for that, for bringing such awesome energy um, to this session. Um, I'm sure we all really appreciate everyone's comments and support here. So I just wanna say thanks for that. And the next session that I'll be running um, is gonna be um, probably next. Um, so I, I wanna run a session that's around how to reach um, low income, more kind of low income communities and demographics. and I'm still kind of fleshing out the ideas for a session. So I might be postponing that until the beginning of the first session of December. But I think that'll be a really interesting session. It's going to be another guest hub session. Um, so there's so many, um, so many of the hubs have so much, so much awesome stuff that they're doing. Today. So some of you might hear from me about this topic. Um, and uh, but next week, so I might do another marketing focused webinar. Um, I might do a go a back to basics. Um, so like social media essentials webinar, which I feel like might be quite useful from what I've heard from this session. So mm -hmm. watch the Facebook Facebook group for more info on that. And yeah, thanks everybody. Oh, so before we go, yeah. the other thing that on this was last week, so I've changed the layout on MailChimp as well. Um, it's not hugely different, but it was enough because I'm not techie at all. It was enough to confuse the living daylights out of me and it took me a while to get used to it. So your MailChimp my masterclass, some of that might out of not day. be quite... Yeah. yeah i was i was able to it's go back to my notes and use it but it yeah it wasn't clear and there was no instructions on how to find anything and i had a complete panic yeah. and the newsletter went out two hours late in the end i was like ah so maybe yeah so maybe i might do i mean i might do a combo one then of getting used to the like the what social like um 
marketing like the changes so it could be for example the facebook studio like facebook creator studio combined with the new changes on mailchimp and how to navigate these new spaces yeah I'll put it once, once i'd worked out where it all was your yes. masterclass, it, it all everything was still there and it was really yeah. easy to follow because because i'd done the master class but literally the, the layout when you first went on is, is all different now and and i just couldn't get past it and couldn't even work out where to start so, so frustrating. i'm still not it was yeah very <laughs> yeah I, it's, that's it it's being in like digital digital marketing it's just really tricky because everything changes like every couple of months like can you just please keep things the same so that people know what they're doing but but no yeah and and <laughs> let us know when you're going to change it if i'd yeah. have known I'd have, I'd have started the day before <laughs> but yeah well yeah. um i'll put a poll then in the in the facebook group for the next session and put like a summary of the different things that have come up today and yeah if you vote for what your favorite topic is we'll go i think we should We'll go that way. And uh, brilliant. Sweet. Thanks, everyone. So, yeah, I'm going to. Okay, really thank, thank you very much, Julia. Yeah. Thanks, okay. Katie. And yeah, have okay. a lovely evening. Enjoy your playing with the new new Canva, Canva skills. Yep, yeah, we will. See you next time. Bye. 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 Bye.